Good morning. Welcome back. Welcome back to our. Uh, this is now our second service. <clears throat> so, are we ready for uh, God's message for today? I hope and uh, pray that you are all in good health today. Let us continue to pray for our frontliners. They are our modern heroes. Some of them passed away because of coronavirus while helping those people who are in sick. So let us uh, continue to pray for them. Uh, I received a message last night that one Filipino Adventist who is a New York nurse uh, passed away because of uh, coronavirus graduated from uh, AUP. So uh, yes, let us continue to pray for them and also our elders or elderly senior citizens uh, in, in our church. Those of you who are watching, uh, welcome to our uh, second service. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we want to ask you once again the presence of the Holy Spirit to be with us. Uh, to guide us in our service and to anoint our minds and hearts as we listen to your word. Uh, be also, please be uh, with our brethren as well this, this day. May we feel your protection each day, O Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> As I watch some uh, videos and uh, reports and news here in British Columbia as well as in the Philippines, um, we have still more uh, people infected by coronavirus. And I share with you last week this, that this is one of the signs that we are truly in the last days. When we say last days, we are nearing to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And I would like to continue that theme for this message this morning because I do believe this is uh, very important, especially in our situation today. Uh, there is a passage in the Bible. It is uh, recorded in the book of Matthew 24. So let us open our Bible to uh, Matthew 24. And we all know Matthew 24 is about the uh, explanation of Jesus Christ on the signs of the times in the last days. In response to the questions of the apostles of Jesus Christ that night. And here in Matthew 24, he mentions so many things about the signs of the last days. But let us read Matthew 24 and the verse is 42. Watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. Again, in Matthew 25, you will see that uh, Jesus Christ uh, gave us a beautiful uh, parable about the uh, wise and uh, 
foolish virgins. But in verse 13, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Because we do not know the day, the hour of Jesus Christ's coming, Jesus Christ bid us to watch. And we are going to see from the Bible uh, some of the signs that Jesus Christ mentioned just before the second coming. And we have to watch these signs. One of the signs that Jesus Christ mentioned is recorded in the book of Matthew 24 and uh, verse 37. After saying in verse 36 that uh, no one knows even the angel of heaven but my father only, he said in verse 37, But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So he used Noah as the example. Okay? Uh, about the nearness of the coming of the Son of Man. Let's read from uh, 38 to 39. For for us in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. I shared with you last week that there is a possibility for human beings to miss the sign. Why? Because during the time of Noah, according to this passage, they did not know until the flood came and took them all away. How did they miss the sign during the time of Noah? You know, Noah was asked by God to build a huge ark, a huge boat. And yet they miss the sign. For so many days and years, they miss the sign. When they saw birds and animals coming into the ark, two by two, seven by seven, they missed the sign. But it was very obvious during the time to see those things. It is not hidden, it is not secret, but they missed the sign. That's why the Bible told us in verse 39, And did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. But for us who read the Bible and rely on the Word of God, and what is happening today is actually one of the signs. And I want you to understand this, that what is going on right now, it is not localized pandemic, it is a global pandemic. And this is one of the signs before the second coming of Jesus Christ. And I want you not to miss that. But to keep watch, keep on looking, keep on doing things uh, for God. So this is one of the signs. So let's take a look at uh, what happened. What happened during Noah's time because Jesus Christ mentioned Noah in relation to the nearness of Christ's coming. So let's take a look at what happened during Noah's time. Let's open our Bible to the book of Genesis chapter 6. During the time of Noah.
beginning from uh, verse 1. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the Son of God saw the daughters of men, and they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they choose. That's why uh, the Bible told us that in the days before the flood, people were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. Okay, uh, One author uh, studied this uh, statement, marrying and giving in marriage. They are married, but they're still giving in marriage. Like in our society today, they're married, get divorced, and giving in marriage again. Divorce and giving in marriage again. Just like the days of Noah. Right? And you look at uh, Genesis chapter 6, it says there, When human beings began to increase in number on earth, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful, and they married any of them they choose. Any of them they choose. Meaning, even if it is not God's will, they still do it. Uh, their master is themselves, or their master are themselves. And uh, they do not obey God's will. But in other translation, uh, I think this is uh, NIV, it says there, and they married any of them they choose. So, marrying and giving in marriage during the time of Noah. And then, when you look at verse 5, because of that, or the result of that, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Only uh, evil continually. In another translation, uh, the human heart was only evil all the time. All the time. There was no day that uh, it was not evil. Evil all the time. The imaginations, uh, the thoughts of his heart, the inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. That was the time of Noah. And Jesus Christ said again, so as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking. Marrying and giving in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. So when we look at uh, the lives of these people during Noah's time, it was clear that the inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time because they married any of them they choose. Any of them. Have you seen this in our society today? Yes. So we are in the last days. This is one of the signs. So keep watch, uh, Jesus Christ said, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. And then verse 11, Genesis chapter 6. Let's uh, continue in verse 11. The earth, was also corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. Hmm. Thirteen. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. I want to stress uh, something uh, on this passage. Beginning from verse 11. The earth was also corrupt before God. Why? The earth was filled 
with violence. Do we have this kind of sign in our society today? You know, they, they married any of them they choose. They were eating and drinking. The earth, according to the Bible, was filled with violence. The earth was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. We are see seeing this with our own eyes today. But Jesus Christ said, that, keep watch, okay? Uh, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. So if you see these things, He is even at the door. He is very near. That's why uh, the Bible says, that when you see these things, you know, your salvation is near. Lift up your hand. Because your salvation is near. Don't, you know, follow those people who abandon the faith. Just keep on going to church, you know. Keep on praying. No matter what, just stay in the faith. Because we really don't know when Jesus Christ will come in the clouds of heaven. You know, some people, when they see uh, some things, they don't want to go to church. If they heard something, they don't want to go to church. And don't abandon your, your faith. And these people will say, Oh, we, we're still, you know, in the faith, but uh, we don't want to go to the church. Right? And if that is the case, then there is something wrong uh, with that. And that is not a healthy relationship uh, with God. So keep on watching on these things. So the earth... Uh, was filled with violence for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. So this is uh, man's choice. Alright? And because of that, uh, God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me for the earth is filled with violence through them and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Those who will be saved will not be part of this or don't have any part of this. They will go to heaven with Jesus Christ. But those who will not be saved will receive destruction and judgment from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So that is during uh, Noah's time, right? Uh... When we look at the other statement of Jesus Christ, let's take a look at, uh, there's also another passage in the book of Luke, right? Luke chapter 17, Beginning from verse 26, again, Noah was mentioned there. But uh, I would like to read from verse 28 because um, there's another story here that was not mentioned in the book of Matthew 24. So Luke 17, verse 28. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day the, that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstones from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So again here, uh, the days or the time of Lot was uh, mentioned and during the time of Lot economy was good right because when you go back to the Bible uh, they bought they sold they planted they built so economy was good right 
But again, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Look at these people. They ate, they drank, they bought. So in our society today, uh, restaurants are open, economy was good, okay? Uh, they planted, they built, they sold. Everything is normal. But let's take a look at what happened uh, during the time of Lot. In Again, in the book of Genesis, at chapter 18, uh, everything was good. But look at the uh, attitude of people uh, during that time. They didn't have fear with God. And that is our situation today. You know? Uh, look at uh, Vancouver area. Now, people seems good, seems fine. They just go to the restaurant, they build houses, look at the economy. Uh, before the coronavirus, one house is, what, one million plus? Old house is one million plus? New house is like, wow, it, it depends uh, upon the location. But everything is fine. But people don't have time with God. They don't even reckon with God. They just live on themselves. They are the masters of their lives. Uh, this is very important for us to understand. Genesis 18. Okay, Let's start with verse 20. And the Lord God said, Behold, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great because their sin is very grave. Okay, very grave. That is 18 and 20. And uh, in other translation, NIV, the Lord said the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grievous. That I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. So, in verse 21, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry against it that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So, the outcry, the scene of Sodom and Gomorrah, according to the Bible, is so great and so grievous. Well, they were just eating and drinking and building, you know, and buying and selling things. Why? It is sin. Because of their attitude uh, with God. So let's, let's continue the story. Uh, Genesis 8, 19. Genesis 19, 4 to 7. Before they had gone to bed, meaning Lot and his family, okay, and the visitors, all the men from every part of the city of Sodom, this is based on uh, New International Version, both young and old surrounded the house. Young and old surrounded the house. They called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. Lot went outside to meet them and shut the door behind him and said, No, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. So as if only Lot knows that those things are wicked. But for the men of Sodom and Gomorrah, young and old, it's like an ordinary thing. Because they said, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. So let me take a look at other translation here. Uh, Genesis 19. Okay, 
uh, verse 5, And they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, that we may know them carnally. It is a New King James Version. So, is this the sign of our society today? Yes. Is the Lord coming back very soon? Yes. I will keep on watching these signs. I hope so. You are watching these signs. So imagine uh, during the time of Noah and Lot, Jesus Christ used them as an example about the nearness of the judgment of God on this world. And we who are watching these signs, God has given us, when you look at uh, Matthew 25 and 26, to see those uh, teachings of Jesus Christ about the ten uh, virgins and about the talents, God has given us talents in order to glorify Him while we are waiting for His second coming, for the coming of Jesus Christ. What is the connection with that in Matthew 24 and Matthew 25? God has given us talents, some five, some ten, you know, in Matthew 24, 25, 26. And you would see there the uh, story of Jesus Christ there. In order for us to prepare people for the second coming of Jesus Christ, God has given us talents, each one of us. Some are good in singing, some good in making friends, some are good in leadership, some are good, you know, in cooking and helping in the church, some good uh, in cleaning, you name it. So if we use those talents to prepare people, invite people to know the truth, then uh, you would realize the the, the parable of talents in Matthew 25, beginning from verse 14, and the ten virgins. Okay? God has given us these gifts. So that while we are watching, we are doing things to prepare these people for the kingdom of God. Because they don't know that this thing will come. Just like Noah, during the time of Noah and during the time of Lot. They thought they were fine. Economy was good, but in reality, they were spiritually dead. In the last days, why uh, people will abandon and be like the time of Sodom and Gomorrah? Uh, it is recorded again in the book of Isaiah. Let's take a look at Isaiah. Isaiah 24, Isaiah 24, 5 and 6. The earth is also polluted by its inhabitants, for they transgress laws, violated the statutes, broke the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse devours the earth, and those who live in it are held guilty. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men are left. Let me read from New King James uh, Version. In my Bible, the uh, topic in chapter 24, the impending judgment on the earth. Okay? And it says here in New King James Version, the earth is also defiled under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant therefore the curse has devoured the earth and those who dwell in it are desolate therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men are left who are these few men or the remnant 
We all know those who read the Bible. Okay? When we look at the prophecy, those uh, few, those remnant people, they have and kept the commandment of God. Okay? But these people, look at the reverse, the opposite. Uh, the earth is also defiled. Okay? Why? They transgress the laws, change the ordinance, and, well, did not obey the everlasting covenant. And New King James broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, the curse has devoured the earth. And few men are left, the rest are burned. What is the everlasting covenant, by the way? Uh, but these people broke the everlasting covenant. And what is the everlasting covenant? Let's read from Deuteronomy 4, uh, 13. So he declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform. That is the Ten Commandments. And he wrote them on the tablets of stone. So people broke the everlasting covenant, meaning they rejected the commandments of God. And you look at our society today. Do we have that? Yes. Do we have people like in the days of Lot? Yes. Do we have people like in the days of Noah? Yes. And then Jesus Christ said, there will be pestilence. Yes, we have today. And we are all seeing these signs. And Jesus Christ said, therefore, keep watch. Keep watch. Don't miss it. Don't miss these signs. And people will proclaim, well, you know, there's no need for Ten Commandments. Do we have that today? Yes. So because of that, the inhabitants of the earth are and few men are left. We all know who are those few men, those remnant. Okay? Uh, these are the people, not only in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, who accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And in the book of Revelation, Jesus Christ revealed to them, okay, what will happen in the future. He gave that message to John, okay? And John to the church, seven churches. You read Revelation chapter 1 and you would see there. And the Bible, Revelation chapter 1 recorded, Blessed are those who what? Hear the words of this prophecy and read the book. And we all know, uh, we are following that direction. We and study the book of prophecy. We proclaim that to the world. And we want them to prepare for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Because we have the spirit of prophecy. Right? We understand the prophecy in the Bible. Because, because we believe that the prophecy of the Bible. Were not man-made interpretation. They were moved by the Holy Spirit of God, the authors of that. So we just follow that. But people, they broke the everlasting covenant, okay? And that is the Ten Commandments according to the book of Deuteronomy. And we have that today. We have that. So when you see about the judgment of God, don't be afraid. Don't, you know, just... Uh, uh, accept some teachings that is against the Bible. Some people ridicule us, right? Uh, because of our belief, right? But don't be afraid. Why? Here is what the promise of God for those who still follow His command. It is recorded in the book of Isaiah, chapter 51. Isaiah 51. 
Beginning from uh, verse 6. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look on the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish away like smoke. The earth will grow old like a garment. And those who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever. And my righteousness will not be abolished. Listen to me, you who know righteousness. You people in whose heart is my law, do not fear the reproach of men, nor be afraid of their insults, for the moth will eat them up like a garment, and the worm will eat them like wool, but my righteousness will be forever, and my salvation from generation to generation. So if we look at the message of Isaiah, a curse devours the earth, those who live in it are held guilty, the inhabitants of the earth are burned because they violated the statutes, broke the everlasting covenant, transgressed the law of God, that's why they are burned. And few men are left. So who are these uh, few men? And according to Isaiah 51, uh, verse 6, these are the people. Okay? Whose heart is my law, God's law? And God said to them, Do not fear the reproach of men, nor be dismayed at their revilings. For the moth will eat them like a garment, and the grub will eat them like wool. But my righteousness will be forever, and my salvation to all generations. Now, some people say, this is only for the Israelites. Well, maybe they don't understand the plan of God for the Gentiles. And what is the plan of God for the Gentiles? Let us read from the book of Hebrews chapter 8. Okay. The salvation of God in the New Testament is not only for the Jews, but also for the Gentiles. Now, when we accept that covenant of God in Hebrews chapter 8, not only for the house of Israel, okay, and Paul explained this in the book of Romans, in the book of Galatians, that those who have faith like the faith of Abraham uh, can be called sons and daughters of God. They belong to Israel. Right? So let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 8. When you read the verse 10, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those, after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people and then verse 12 for I will be merciful to their uh, unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more and even Peter mentioned that we are a chosen chosen people of God we are chosen generation before, we were not God's people, but now we are God's people. Before, we have not received mercy. Now, we have received mercy. So, we are part of God's people. And the law of God is written in their hearts. That's why, in the book of Isaiah, Listen to me, you who know righteousness. A people in his heart is my law. You know, do not fear uh, the reproach of men. Uh, do not be dismayed about their revilings. Anyway, we are the remnant and we have the salvation. But these people uh, will receive the judgment of God. Will receive the judgment of God. 
So are we seeing these signs in our situation today? In our, you know, in our community, in the entire world? You'll see these people. These are the signs. But for us as a, as a Christian, Seventh-day Adventist Christians, who obey the commandments of God and who wait for the second coming of Jesus Christ, uh, we have to put away the old self. Right? Let's take a look at uh, Colossians chapter 3 and this is the last uh, book that we're going to read today as we watch okay the nearness of Christ coming because Jesus Christ said therefore keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come so as we watch all these things okay and preparing ourselves for these things let's take a look at Colossians chapter 3 what are the things that uh, we need to be sure of in, in ourselves? Beginning from verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Okay? I want to stress something here. We died. And if we died and raised with Christ, Paul said, Seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. That's why the message of Hebrews chapter 6, 7, 8, and 9, and 10. Those passages, those chapters were focused on the sanctuary. Right? And Apostle Paul, some others say the author of the Hebrews, Encourage us to approach the throne of God, of God boldly because we have a high priest. So when Christ who is our life appears, then also will appear with him in glory. So who is our life? Jesus Christ. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desire and covetousness which is idolatry so put away those things okay because of these things the wrath of god is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourself once walk when you live in them once walk but now we don't walk that kind of lifestyle anymore but now you yourselves are to put all of this, okay? Put off all of this. What are those? Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, okay? Since you have put off the old man with his deeds. And then put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him who is the image of the invisible god jesus christ so genesis 1 26 god created man in his own image so in the new testament we were created again in the image of jesus christ 12 therefore as the elect of god holy and beloved put on tender mercy kindness humility meekness long suffering bearing with one another and forgiving one another if anyone has a complaint against another even as christ forgave you so you also must do but above all things put on love which is the bond of perfection 
and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. So, you can read everything here from until 17. These are the things that we need to put away and the things that we need to put on because we are new men. Why? We are waiting for the appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. While people are not doing this, you know, those people who rejected God and they want to live their own way, well, that, that's their choice. But for us who are waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ, while waiting, these are the things that we need to practice, right? To practice because we don't want to be like people in the days of Noah in the days of Lot they do their own things but here we are in the New Testament we were called by God and we obey his law and while we keep on watching on these things we're still helping people to prepare them for the second coming of Christ do not be, according to the Bible again, you know, don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Do not fear the reproach of men. If you know that you are part of the remnant, just continue in serving God. You now go to church. Uh, every Sabbath or every uh, Vesper service, especially Vesper service, because that is the beginning of the Sabbath. The Sabbath doesn't begin in the morning, it's in the evening, Friday evening. Go to church. You have to attend the church. Don't skip the church. If you are not sick, if you are not uh, feeling well, if you are not in, on, on vacation, you know, go to church, even in, on vacation. Find one church there. If not, then you can have your own service in your room. It will actually help you to connect with God and to prepare yourselves for the second coming of Jesus Christ. So don't uh, have fear uh, with the reproach of men. Because the Bible says, For the moth will eat like a garment, but those who are saved, those who remains and part of the remnant, we will see God's salvation in the end. I hope that this message uh, gives you the uh, big picture why we accepted this faith, why we accepted these teachings of the Bible. Yes, we do believe that our church is not a just a club group right i go to church because my friend attends there no we want to prepare ourselves for the second coming of jesus christ and i hope that is your thinking as well uh, let's encourage one another and prepare um, one another while we are still here on this planet earth May God bless you all, and let's have a word of prayer. Our dear God, Heavenly Father, we uh, again, we want to thank you for these signs that uh, Jesus Christ mentioned in the Old and the New Testament. And we are seeing this with our own eyes. And while we are still waiting for his return, uh, he has given us these gifts in order for us to prepare other people as well while we are watching and waiting. But at the same time, Heavenly Father, help us to put away the old self and cultivate in us the new man so that we can serve one another in love and in sincerity and in truth. And now, my dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, 
May the love of God the Father be with you, and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be showered upon you. And may the comfort and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you as well. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May God bless you. May God keep you. And keep safe. Happy Sabbath to all. Thank you.